Morning people. Right, I said I was going to do one about feeding. Now this is going to be controversial to say the least because people aren't going to agree with what I do. I've come into one of my sheds to be honest. That's, I've just opened a couple of bags of corn. That's my multi mix. That's red rosette. I haven't got no woodward corn here so red rosette let's substitute for that which it's near enough the same anyway. But anyway, it's going to cause controversy. A lot of people aren't going to agree. I don't. I don't mind. Do you know what I mean? I do it my way. I don't expect everybody to follow me. I'm not a top top man. I'm just a normal bloke down an allotment who keeps pigeons and done his fair share of winning. Okay, that's all. And I just want to get rid of a few myths. You know, people. In my opinion, this. And I don't know arguing. You know, we can discuss this. We can all sit down. Having a pint at Blackpool and discuss it, you know what I mean? But let's not argue. There's a lot going on in the world, we don't want no arguing. But what I want, the myths I'm on about, you know, people say, oh, this, and I don't want to mention the specific brands, but they'll say you'll not win unless you're on this. It's a balanced diet, it's been proven. Well, how can somebody say it's been proven when what's it been proven against? Is there any scientific data that says that is a completely balanced diet for a pigeon? Because let me just put it another way, and I'm only a layman, don't forget. That unless you get a pot and say, I'm going to put three bits of maize in there, two peas, three mung beans, five bits of wheat, two bits of barley, and a little bit of seed, and I'm going to give that to every pigeon. Because when I go like that, in a mixture and go like that not everyone's going to be the same and then if if I got a scoop said scoop and went like that and chuck that in a hopper in a feeder on the floor every pigeon isn't going to eat the same so it can't be balanced it can't be unless you are going to count every individual grain and put it in there and give it to every individual pigeon and then it's only balanced in your what you think to balance feed for that pigeon once you start feeding in a trough or on the floor as i do it can't be balanced no matter what it says on bag no matter what the marketing it's that marketing word again they're coming out so yeah this feed is the best feed you will ever fly your young birds on because it's proven it's not proven People might be doing well with it, but they might be doing well because of other things. They might be doing well because they've got really good pigeons. And that's what it mainly boils down to. You've got their good pigeons and good management, right? Me being a tight ass, and it's not because of the money. I'm a welding inspector. I was a welder by trade, then a gaffer. Then I started, did a bit more study and became a welding inspector. I've worked all over the world. I've worked in more continents than probably people has been in all the countries. You know, I've worked in Brazil, Nigeria, Iraq... A little Angola, most of Europe, you know what I mean, from Spain, Romania, Norway, Thailand twice. I've worked all over the world and some of the money they pay me on a day rate would make your eyes water. So it's not because of the money. I just like to dispel myths. And when people says to me, you must have this corn and you must have that corn to win. Nah, I'll try and win on something else. So as you know, my base mix... I'm just going to get a couple of scoops so you'll hear the noise. I can't let go of the camera. Here's the malting mix. That is my base. And I think it's good. I mean, there's even got sunflower in it. I mean, that's another thing. When you get a bag of corn, unless you keep mixing that in your drums or wherever you keep it, a lot of the small stuff goes to the bottom. So it changes. Do you know what I mean? It it cannot, people go on about balanced, it cannot be balanced. It can't. Only, what? Well, anyway, that, I'm, that's another subject we'll get onto another time. But anyway, that's my base mix, is that. And like I was trying to say yesterday, I don't change it all the time. Do you know what I mean? That, there's always a percentage of that in my mixes. And I'm going to start from when they come back from a race. And I've got all different pots here with stuff in. I'm going to try and make it simple because that's me. Simple Jake, okay? When they come back from a race, they would have 25% of this. So we'll call it a scoop, okay? 
into there. That would have two of Gibiologies. Okay, into there. And one of barley, the straight barley. I'll just put a bit more into these up. Okay, that would be mixed together. And that's what they come home to the race on. Okay. Now they will stay on that for the Sunday. Then the Monday night, I'm going to, to ditch that. <laughs> but you'll get the idea that on the Monday night, it'd be 50% of this multi mix. That's two scoops then. So we're counting one scoop as 25%. One of barley, one of barley, and one of the shorties. Okay, and we can have that on the Tuesdays as well. And it looks like that. It's just a little bit stronger. Do you get me drift? So then on on the Wednesday, they've still got to have this percentage of of the malting mix because I don't like changing the food all all together. So they have 25% of that and 75% of the racing mix. Whichever we do a mix you use. Okay. Yeah. All we've done is got rid of the barley and the decorative and replaced it with your widower corn. But still keeping, this is just my way again, still keeping a little bit of your base mix. I mean, I use this multi mix, it's top flight. I know that's upside down, super molten. It's only because I like it. I like it's got everything I think the pigeon needs and wants. I'm, I think you could just race on that. I, I honestly do. But that gets mixed up then, that's 75, 25, and they stay on that and go to the race. Now, if you race with a little bit further, or your weather forecast was going to be a little bit shitty give them a bit extra maize or give them some peanuts i know a lot of people like using peanuts i do myself mainly as a tip bit to tame them you know the cocks i'll just walk in the cocks they'll be in the boxes and if they don't go to the box they don't get a peanut do you know what i mean so that's just one of my little things but there's loads of little things you can do but all i'm trying to say is you don't have to follow the trend on marketing do you know what i mean top fly i think it's good food right money it's not expensive. That's good corn. Let me get a scoop of that to show you. There's no wrong with that. That's good corn. Do you know what I mean? Red rosette. Not expensive. And the way I feed, a lot of people measure with this. Right? And they'll give them one of them. It's about an ounce. Well, me with my hands, I can get a, a slack handful. So I can pull like that up and put it in there. It just overflows a little bit, look. Okay? So I go around my boxes, because sometimes I feed it box. When the cocks are on their own, they'll get fed in boxes. When they're all together, they'll get fed on floor. And I just get a slack handful like that, because I know it's near enough an ounce. And they, they can have that, you know, until the morning, and I'll come and empty the bowls, put them all in a box, and that can go up to young bears or whatever. And the young bears get fed exactly the same as this as well. Do you know what I mean? I don't... Because it works for the cocks and that, it's going to work for young uns. Your young uns are going to be six, seven month old. Do you know what I mean? Feed them like a yearling. Right? You've got a team of yearlings, I have. To get this food, that's, that's what they're going to race on. Do the same with your young uns. Do you know what I mean? That's farm barley. Still got odd air on, look. But they'll eat it. Some people say I might get stuck in the throat. So all that that gets left in the field that's got that on it, it you'd find dead pigeons all over fields. Man, that's what they're used to eating. They'll break that off. Do you know what I mean? They're to pick it up and start shaking it. They're breaking it off. And that's just bog stand up with your relative. That's a bit of maize I must have dropped in. Again, top flight. And I'm not just saying it's top flight. You can use Bamford's, whatever food you want to use. I'm not telling you to use top flight. What I'm saying is top flight is decent food and it's not expensive. And if you subsidise that then, with farm barley mixed into your depurative, you're cutting the cost down again. So that's racing done. I know I'm going on, and I'm sorry, you know, 
I'm not an expert, I keep telling you. I'm just I've won it, I've won my fair share I have over the years. And I will win some again, and I will. I've got confidence in myself. And I think that instills confidence in your pigeons. When you're confident, it's like with dogs and that, you feel you feel confident, I'm sure it rubs off on them. I, 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 some people might say I'm a bit thick with that, but anyway, that's that's what I think. You'll be confident, they'll be confident. So then, when racing's finished, because I said I was going to go down onto it molting, right, they've finished racing, you've got the lights on for young ones now, because you've got to get them through their molt, because they've been on dark or whatever you do with them, but they've got to get through the molt, get the lights on, get them through the molt, Malting mix, 50%, 50% beans, okay? They need that protein in them, they're building new flights. Get the protein into them. But I, again, I stick with the malting mix. It's only my preference, that's what, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm not expecting people to do everything my way. I'm just trying to tell you the way I do do it, and it's not expensive to do, because you want to keep your costs down as well. So it's 50% of the molten and 50% beans. If you can get one year old beans, all the better. Buy this year's and save them for next year. Buy two lots if you have to. And then once I've finished the malt, then you can go on to 50% molten, 25 beans, 25 barley. Do you know what I mean? Or you can even 25 molten, 25 beans and 50 barley. Do you know what I mean? Your preference. Do it how you want to do it. Do you know what I mean? All I'm trying to get over to you, it doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to use all this, mm, I don't know, branded, named, big time corn that comes over from another country. Do you know what I mean? I can't I can't keep saying, you know, don't use this corn and that, don't you? I'll have them ringing me up. They do, by the way. So, that's how I do things. Additives on the corn, yep, cider vinegar I'll put on, I, I put it on the corn me, I don't put it in the water. The way I look at it, you wouldn't put vinegar in your tea, you know what I mean, if you was having fish and chips, you would not put vinegar in your tea, you put it on your chips. So I put it on the corn. A pigeon can go longer without food than it can without water, and I think if you start putting loads of stuff in the water, they'll not drink, and if they don't drink, you'll never get them on form. I do put a bit of ground nut oil on sometimes. It's really when it suits me, really. I was like, oh, I've got to put a bit of that on. Do you know what I mean? And I just think it does the feathers all right. So once a week, once a fortnight, they'll have ground nut oil from Morrison's, it is. Cheapest chips. Um, and that's about, about it, really. I don't... I treat for canker. But that can be another one when we do on medication. Because I don't really treat for a deal apart from canker. Do you know what I mean? I'm waffling on again, so... We've done this, let's let's not argue, I'm here to answer questions, anybody wants to send me a message you like you do, and thank you ever so much for your comments, you know, I'm getting a lot of comments come to me, you know, saying, keep it going, Ron, it's bang on, I'm, I'm learning a lot from this, well, that's all I want to do, I'm 60 this year, like I say, I've done my first year winning, if I only win one more race, I'll be happy, as long as it's the national, <laughs> I know Jason McCarthy will be sitting and screaming out, you can fuck off, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's what I want to do. While this is on, this has helped me. Do you know what I mean? This has kept me a bit saner because I'm doing these, I'm having a crack with everybody, and I'm on my own on an allotment. Do you know what I mean? And it's it's kept me sane, and I hope it all keeps everybody else sane and safe. Okay? Now then, please, when you watch this video, if you do watch it, can you please subscribe to the channel? Because then... I can just put it on there, you know what I mean? And then you'll, you'll get a notification when I've put a new video on it. Don't cost you anything like that, so don't worry. Just subscribe. Just press the subscribe button, dink, and subscribe. Because I think I've got eight jod at the minute. And the, and, the, and the videos are getting lots of views, so it gives us something to talk about. If we all meet up at Blackpool, and they'll say, that's him, the big fat baldy sod that talks about shit on the internet. Let's have a crack about it, okay? Righto, people, stay safe. If I can help in any way, send us a message. Ta-da!